Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today we are going to discuss how we can improve the shoulder in terms of abduction if someone has an impingement syndrome. If you just have a look at this skeleton for a second, and this area is known as the subacromial space, and typically a lot of patients will get pain within this sort of area. Most of the time we tend to have like about 8 to 12 millimeters of space, typically around 10 mils, which is one centimeter. Within the space commonly will be the supraspinatus, which can get caught, and also the bursa. We can get the long head of bicep, and potentially we can get the infraspinatus posteriorly as well, underneath the acromion. Most of the time the acromion is relatively flat, but on odd occasion it can be slightly curved or even hooked. And naturally if we have a reduced space because of the curved of the acromion, then we are going to suffer more with impingement syndrome. When we, when we abduct, for instance, to 90 degrees, the movement is not just from the humerus. If I take my arm to 90 degrees, then the humerus has only abducted 60 degrees and the scapula would have rotated 30 degrees and would have called it a two to one ratio and it's known as a scapular humeral ribbon. If I continue to 180 degrees, then it's 120 degrees of abduction from the humerus and 60 degrees by the scapula. And what sometimes happens is, is that as we are abducted in, we almost take it for granted that we can lift the arm, but between say 60 to 70 to about 110 degrees, it's a very common sign that we call a painful arc. And again, it could be because of an impingement, but also it could be because the scapula is not truly rotated on its axis. The humerus, as we abduct, has to inferiorly glide only maybe one to two millimeters, even though we've got 90 degrees of total abduction, for it to abduct, the humerus has to, what they call, if that's the top of the shoulder, as we're abducting, it has to inferiorly glide just a couple of millimeters to allow the abduction to occur. And sometimes a patient has an inability to, to abduct because of the lack of the inferior glide. So that's where the, the therapist would come in to try to increase that. First of all, I tend to hold the patient's arm on the anterior part of the humeral head. And rather than you go into abduction, I would normally go into flexion first. It just seems to help me. Rather than going straight in, especially if a patient has pain around, say, 60, 70 degrees, I almost use the humerus to my advantage before we go into the second movement. So let me just show you an example. I cradle the arm, I use my fingertips lightly on the humeral head, and I simply just flex my patient. And as I flex them, my fingers here are slowly pushing it posteriorly, inferiorly. So I'm pushing it into a glide, and then I'm inferiorly gliding to continue. Most of the time, the patient shouldn't really feel any discomfort where I am pushing. The downside is most therapists have a tendency to press too hard, and that can cause tender area where you are pushing. So be a little bit careful. I never say any numbers on how many we do this, but if I was to roughly ascertain the motion, I'd probably say between, say, six and 10 times. But I almost do it until I feel there's a, a benefit. Now, once I've done this a few times, the most important movement is this one. Let's say, for instance, the patient has pain around 70, 80 degrees. And she might get pain coming down because it's a referred pattern into the deltoid tubercle area from the rotator cuff or even the bursa. I suggest you try to turn the arm so we externally rotate, so the greater tubercle is moving away from the acromion. I also suggest we apply a little bit of traction as we do this. And as I lift the arm, let's say pain is at 70, 80, I will go just before it and come back down. But these fingers here, as I'm coming up, I'm trying to almost glide the humeral head inferiorly. So as I abduct, I'm trying to push the humeral head down. And hopefully, as I come up to 80, 90 degrees, the patient has less discomfort. I can normally tell by the expression of the face if they are irritated by my movements. And as I get towards 90, I try to glide it here. The patient will probably glance out of their eye to see if they are improving. And then every now and again, I will go back to flexion. And again, I will glide the humeral head posteriorly, inferiorly, like this. And then I come back and do the same movement again. So I'm gliding as I abduct. Now, if I get to 90 degrees, even to 100, and there's no expression from the patient, and the patient doesn't mention anything about any discomfort, then I might say to my patient, can you help me a little bit? So like 10, 20%, so she's helping, but I'm still gliding with my fingertips here. 
So the patient helps me, so it's almost like an active, passive motion. And then after 20-30%, I might say to her, pull a little bit more. Let's say she does get a bit of pain, I might say to my patient, push your arm down against my hand. So she pushes, so this could be added in. It's hard to say when I do this, because I would do this with a, a real life patient. So they would push down, which activates the inferior cuff for 10 seconds. We, we would relax, take a breath in please. And as I breathe out, I might say to her, bring the arm, or I will do it for her, where we glide over again. And I'm hoping, once I've done this a few times, that we can get to 110 degrees. The patient can help me a little bit. And again, we can tell by the expression if it's, uh, it's pain-free. This seems to work very well for me. The second thing I do is I try to assist the scapula in its rotation because the focus at the moment is on the humerus rather than anything else. If we start around 45 degrees, give or take, my hand will go onto the inferior scapula here. My hand will go onto the top. And this time, rather than trying to control the humerus, I almost want to rotate the scapula into an upward rotation position. So my patient is going to start from here and abduct, and I'm going to slowly glide their scapula over. And again, she comes back down. My fingers, if you look at my fingers, are on the anterior humeral head. I can also almost like pull back. So if you do it again, please. So I'm pulling back and down as I'm rotating the scapula. Again, I never say how many times, but if I was to mention the number, it would probably be between four and six for this one. Okay, let's do one more. Run there. Once I've done these techniques, I would more than likely get my patient to stand and retest to see if there's a reduction in the painful arc, but I'd probably start them here. So just slowly lift your arm and see how it feels. And she says it feels a lot easier to lift over and the pain is less, then the treatment would have helped. And then I would get my patient to stand. So this could be one way of treating an impingement syndrome. And it seems to work very well for me. I hope you like watching the video. And if you get a chance, please subscribe. Thank you.